if y'all think the strategy is getting rid of men not having families not having babies that's going to be a lonely lonely life seriously i know we talk about i'm single by choice okay for now like saying that oh let's do the four b movements let's baby you can even boycott for one week let's start there let's start there now when you start talking about forbidding dating sex childbirth and marriage with men you're stepping into some deep waters it's a radical stance that's got a lot of people talking, especially within the black community. There's genuine concern that movements like this might exacerbate existing tensions rather than bridging gaps. And you know what? That concern is valid. We already let the white women convince us to kick out the black fathers and we didn't need black men with the feminist movement. And now this 4B movement, we about to let these women from Korea convince us to <laughs> not create families in a black community. And I'm seeing women, I, I just did my research. I, I saw a few videos and I see women talking about, I've been on a 4B move, I'm on a 4C, D, E, F. We don't need these men, we gotta strategize. We gotta do, we gotta get strategic about how these men are about to come after us. Y'all been talking about these of men. Like, y'all gotta wake up. This is not beneficial to us. If y'all think the strategy is getting rid of men not having families not having babies that's going to be a lonely lonely life all it is is a way to keep you single and by yourself and that is not a healthy um happy fulfilling life to be by yourself who wants to be by yourself like seriously i know we talk about i'm single by choice okay for now for now which is cool but y'all so we about to this is was this is what we are strategizing not strategizing how we can create families how we can better our community we strategize on how we can lock in as women and you know uh, I, i'm a pray I, i'm a pray we're seeing this dialogue emerge about the interconnectedness of black men and women how their destinies are intertwined but there's this looming fear that movements like the phobie might just drive a wedge between them and that's not something to take lightly we need unity not division the fate of black men is the fate of black women. Just just walk with me for a little bit. I keep hearing about the 4B movement, which is basically a feminist movement that started in South Korea in 2019. The purpose is to combat the patriarchy in South Korea and they have four major no's. So it's no dating men, no SEX with men, no carrying children for men, and no marrying men. What benefits would this type of movement have for black women and the black community as a whole? As black people, we forget that black men and black women, like we share the same struggle. So whatever happens to them happens to us. And whatever happens to us happens to them. There is no separation. I think by not having children, we're just contributing to our own extinction. And I don't understand the point of that. I think we get so caught up in the political polarization of black men and black women in, in like online echo chambers that we forget that we really need each other. If you wanna participate in the 4B movement, that is fine, but I really think if you're considering that, like maybe you should just take a break from being online, go outside, touch grass, and work on yourself for a little bit, and then maybe come back. Now amidst all this, there are some strong voices echoing sentiments about responsibility, about not pointing fingers. It's about acknowledging that relationships are complex and it takes effort from both sides. And they're not wrong. We can't just lay blame without seeking understanding. But let's not forget the human element here. Relationships are messy, whether they're between black men and women or any other group. And while some might see the Fubi movement as a solution, others view it as a catalyst for more strife. Every time I see a video of a woman talking about like, oh, men are XYZ, men are XYZ, and then under the comments, the, under the comments, uh, people are like saying that, like, oh, let's do the 4B movements. Let's, baby, you can even boycott from one week. Let's start there. Let's start there. Y'all can even boycott for one week. Y'all can even united, united, to stop the government from banning one app. Y'all can even united. To, to stop so many things that's currently happening. Y'all cannot even do that. But y'all wanna start the 4B movement like Korean woman. Baby, y'all will never be able to handle that. Let's start speaking truthfully. Y'all will not hate. <clears throat> y'all wanna 
be able to handle that. I'm really trying my best not to be into controversy, but some of y'all literally pissing the fuck out of me. The full be movement, the full. Y'all will not be able to handle that. We have too many Pekmisha to start the full be movement. There's a lot of American women who are Pekmisha. Every time a man move, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not even into all, oh, let's decenter men, let's, like, because I do believe that people, mm, 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 us, human nature, need a companionship, like, I believe that. Okay, I do believe that. So, decentering men, decentering men, like, it's not really my prerogative, like, I really don't give a fuck about that. But I care about when other women are doing something important, and then we have American women who saying, like, oh, let's do the free movement, like, Baby, start boycotting first. Let's start boycott first. Let's start there. If you can do, if you can boycott for like a month, two months, then you are able to talk about the phobia movement. Some, I'm, I still see some of y'all drink Starbucks. I still see some of y'all drink Coca Cola. Y'all still buy Nestle. I thought we were boycotting Amazon. I just saw a fucking influencer doing an unboxing Amazon package. <laughs> Let's start there. The next person I see fucking commenting the 4B movement. Oh, walai bilai, ibola mama na yo. So what's the path forward? Well, perhaps it begins with genuine dialogue, with truly listening to each other's perspectives. It might mean stepping away from the screens for a bit, engaging in face-to-face -face conversations. Because at the core of it all, we're all part of the same community, and we need to find common ground that brings us closer, not tears us apart. In essence, what we're seeing here is a clash of ideologies, a clash of perspectives within the black community and beyond. And it's okay to have differing opinions. That's what makes us human. But what's essential is that we find a way to navigate through these differences constructively, with empathy and understanding. At the heart of this discussion lies a fundamental question. How do we foster healthier relationships between black men and women? How do we address systemic issues without resorting to extreme measures that may inadvertently deepen divides? It's about recognizing the shared struggles and triumphs of black individuals, understanding that unity is paramount in overcoming adversity. It's about acknowledging the complexities of gender dynamics and societal pressures that affect us ALL. Moreover, this conversation extends beyond the confines of the black community. It's a broader discourse about relationships, equality, and social change that resonates across cultural boundaries. Ultimately, the Forby movement serves as a catalyst for introspection and dialogue. It challenges us to confront uncomfortable truths and reimagine the way we navigate relationships and societal and ORMS. So as we continue to grapple with these complex issues, let's remember the importance of empathy, communication, and solidarity. Let's strive to build a future where all individuals, regardless of gender or race, can thrive in healthy, fulfilling relationships. Thanks for watching the Obi Podcast. Please do subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Cheers.